Okay, my chess friends, I warmly welcome you to this chess video looking at some end game principles. And in this particular video, we are going to look at the concept of triangulation. Uh, what is triangulation? Well, essentially, it's fairly simple. We're simply trying to lose a move. You see, in this position here, it's our turn to move, but we would rather it was our opponent's turn to move. And we therefore use a little maneuver called triangulation. We move in this little kind of triangle formation, trying to reach the same position with our opponent to move. Because if it was this position with our opponent to move, we have what is termed the opposition. And we can use the opposition to push the Black King backwards and invade the space that um, he leaves behind. So we begin with knight, sorry, King to d4. Our opponent comes to d6. We use this little triangle maneuver. And the King goes back to e7. And we play King e5. And we have reached the exact same position with our opponent to move. We have the opposition. The Black King must go back. And this is a little bit tricky. If we move to e6, well, Black will come to e8 and Black will retain what is termed the opposition. So we sidestep that. King to f6. King to e8, King to e6, and we have retained the opposition. Now, black is essentially in Zigzwang. Whatever move he makes is essentially a self-defeating move. If he moves here to f8, we'll simply invade and win the pawn and promote our own pawn. And if he moves towards the queen side, with the king to d8, we'll invade the space. It's only a single move. Again, he is only a single move. And we will win this pawn here. And we will be able to shepherd our own pawns home, promote and meet our opponent. So this is a concept of triangulation. Essentially, we lose a move through this little maneuver trying to reach a position like this where we retain the opposition it's our opponent's turn to move and we can push the black king backwards uh, getting a winning end game let's take a look at an actual game this is a game from 1922 and with the white pieces is max uwe who was the world champion and with black pieces is someone with the wonderful name of hendrik van Hartingsveld. And let's check it out. We have e4 and Hendrik plays the French defence. And Max Uwe plays the most aggressive variation. Knight to c3. Of knight f6. Max Uwe pins the knight. Knight's got to go back and here black will lose very valuable dark square bishop. But here Max Uwe plays a very interesting variation. He's prepared to give up a pawn. He plays h4. And he's going to argue that the open file for his rook, the leading development, is going to be worth a measly h pawn. And knight to f4. I came to b6, eyeing the duty c4 square. Queen g4, g6. It's really interesting. If you look at this structure here, it looks pretty strong. But there's some latent tactics here against a rook which is undefended. And the way Max Uwe goes about exploiting this is, is absolutely fabulous. We have triple zeros, knight to c6. Bishop to d3. He's not afraid of losing the d pawn. 
You can see all of Max UV species are putting pressure on the structure here. Our bishop to d7, and knight takes on g6. Got to take with the f pawn, and then the wonderful bishop takes on g6 with check. This bishop cannot be touched. I mean, if you if you touch this bishop with h takes, then you're you're entering a, a world of pain. In the game, uh, Hendrik von Hartungsfeld actually played the best move. He played king to d8. Bishop take on h7. And here he decided to give back the pawn, sorry, give back the piece. With knight takes on d4. Rook takes on d4. c5. And the rook simply stepped back to d3. The king is trying to find cover behind this wall of pawns here. So Hendrik uh, von Hartensel played king to c7. Rook's double on the h file. The a rook comes into the game. We have f4, c4. Again, Max Uwe tries to open up lines. He's prepared to sacrifice another pawn. If you notice the juxtaposition of the, the king and the queen, there's a tactic on the chessboard. Rook came to e8, and queen takes on b6, winning. An important central pawn and opening up lines to the black king who's now in the center of the chessboard. Rook took on e7. Bishop takes, rook takes, bishop takes. Trying to pin the bishop, but the bishop is in fact defended. Rook e1, and I think this was a poor decision by. Uh, Hendrik van Hartingsfeld to take this. Okay, it wins a pawn, but this other pawn is going to run. And now the rook is led into passivity, nursing this pawn, trying to prevent it from uh, queening. Okay, the king can come in the centre. Wins a pawn, but we now have this three on two queenside majority for white. And the way Max Uwe goes about supporting the pawns with his king is, is truly instructional. You can see that the, the white pawns are much more advanced than their black counterparts, and this extra space makes them uh, all the more dangerous. And eventually it comes. Here we have b6. Takes, takes. And here we have the position, well, a very similar position that we looked to in the very first little example. Now it's white to move. We would rather that it was black to move. So we've got to try and give up a move. And actually we did this with the excellent king to d4. Planning on a little triangulation. Well, Hendrik went back, and it's important not to repeat the position. So we have knight to e5. Again, Max is is trying to keep or trying to get the opposition, and this happens here with king to d6. And now white has the opposition and he can force this and force the black king backwards and invade the space and enter a winning end game. And after c6, black in fact resigns. There is no moves. If the king goes to something like b8, then he simply gets mated like this. 
if the pawn instead decides to take, like this here, well, looks like stalemate, but it's not because the pawn is free to move. And black is mated like this. So very, very interesting game from Max Uwe. And we had this little end game with triangulation where White essentially had to lose a move. And Max Uwe did this with planning triangulation. Here, here, here. Trying to reach the same position with his opponent to move. And he eventually gained the opposition like this here and was able to force the Black King backwards. So that is triangulation, my chess friends. It's a fairly simple concept. All we're doing is trying to lose a move and reach the same position with our opponent to move so that we can use opposition to push the King backwards and we can invade the space that is left behind. So I'm, I might do some more, you know, end game videos it's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, sometimes it can be rather dry and um, it is uh, sometimes very technical, but if we can mix it up, you know, with some very interesting games and see how they played out, it, it helps, uh, helps a bit. <laughs> so anyway, I thank you very, very much for watching this chess video. Hope you got something from it you can apply in your own chess games. And I sincerely wish you well with them. Take care, my friends, and goodbye. Go away from my window Leave at your own chosen speed I am not the one you Protect you